Hello. In this video, I'm going to talk about the relative reactivity of the different carboxylic acid derivatives toward uh, nucleophilic attack. And um, this video is going to be supplemented by another video that's going to come back uh, in a little bit and add other carbonyl electrophiles into this uh, series. But right now, we're just going to talk about the carboxylic acid derivatives. Um, and currently, uh, for the most common types of derivatives, the carboxylic acid derivatives range from the acid chloride at the most reactive end Uh, and then most people will put the nitrile functional group at the least reactive end. And I'm not, I'm going to leave some space on the other side of the nitrile because I, I have something I want to put over there. But I'm going to go least reactive. With all of the other things kind of in between. Uh, And hydrides are, are less reactive than acid chlorides towards nucleophiles. Carboxylic acids and esters come in here next. Amides are, are the next functional group. Oh, nitrogen. And then I'm actually going to make a point of drawing over here on the far right the carboxylate anion. Uh, and, and that's important uh, in a minute. The, the you know the, the acid chloride is more reactive than the the ester, which is or than the the anhydride, which is more reactive than the carboxylic acid. And the carboxylic acid is generally considered to be about equivalent in reactivity to uh, the ester, the ester is sl maybe slightly less reactive in some cases, maybe more reactive depending on what R group is on the ester. Esters are more reactive than amides. Amides are more reactive than nitriles, though, though there are some folks that might put amides and nitriles in similar reactivity. Um, okay. I'm, I'm going to you know, maybe say that amides are a little bit more reactive than nitriles. Because nitriles have the triple bond instead of the carbonyl group. Um, and don't worry, we'll talk in the videos on the nitriles, how, how they are still considered carboxylic acid derivatives. Uh, and then the carboxylate anion with its negative charge is the least reactive since it has a negative charge. Um, you know, nucleophiles are things that have excess electron density. This thing has excess electron density on its own, so it's least likely to uh, to to do so. Um, I when I teach this course, this this course, I get to this topic after I've covered uh, aromatic substitution reactions. So I've already talked a lot about electron donating and electron withdrawing groups. And so, oh, I've changed my font to something weird. Let me try to fix my font, sorry. All right, here we go. Uh, and the chlorine and the halogens are weak deactivators. These are electron withdrawing groups. And here, the, the acetyl group, or actually, or I'm sorry, the acetoxy group is a moderate activator and, um, and then the other functional groups you know that are with the exception of the nitrile is weird these are all strong activators so uh, you can see that we have electron withdrawing electron donating better electron donating so really what what we're comparing here is the ability, relative ability of whatever this thing is. And I'm going to use Z. We're going to use the, just the generic thing. 
And, and there's usually at least one lone pair on Z. You know, the relative ability of Z to be electron donating through resonance. And Z is plus, right? So when Z is equal to chlorine, um, when Z is equal to chlorine, we can draw these two resonance structures, uh, or these two resonance contributors. But you know, chlorine is bigger than carbon, and the, the second resonance structure is not very important. Uh, e, and you know, chlorine's electronegative. Right? Now, the ability of all of the other functional groups to be electron donors is somewhat counterintuitive because oxygen and nitrogen are uh, electron withdrawing by induction. They, you know, they're electronegative atoms. But because they have similar size to carbon, their ability to be donating by resonance is pretty good. Um, and in the case of the, the acetoxy group on the anhydride, the reason why it's not a strong electron donor is because there's another carbonyl group over here that's competing for attention. So um, it's not necessarily as good of a, uh, oops, I don't need this heading from the last video. It's not necessarily as good of an electron donor as, say, the OH or the alkoxy, but it is still capable of being electron donating, uh, such as that is. And then uh, the carboxylic acid and the ester are fairly similar, uh, so we'll just do the ester. Oh, and you know, and so now, now there isn't another uh, electron withdrawing group on the other side of that oxygen, another carbonyl competing. So this resonance contributor is more important for the ester than it is for the anhydride. Uh, and then finally, we get to the, you know, let's just copy the whole row. We'll get to the amide. Now... Since nitrogen is less electronegative than oxygen, this resonance contributor is even more important than it is for, for the ester. And then finally, you know, finally, when we have the alkoxide anion, we already have, we just have an anion. So this is, you know, as noted, And I answer poor electrophiles. And I wanted to make sure that I had the uh, carboxylate anion on the list because there's only one nucleophile that I know of that reacts with carboxylate anion. Uh, and we'll, we'll get there uh, eventually down the line. It's lithium aluminum hydride, um, which reacts with everything. So the nitrile is a little bit weird. It's th just that it has the triple bond and triple bonds are really strong. Right? So I want to scroll back up here to the top. And uh, I want to bring this stuff downward a little bit. Um, I'm gonna finish this video off, and, and I want to I want to remove my my activator deactivator kind of language here. Put, put a big arrow. Yeah, let's make it under. Let's make it under me. It is easy to convert uh, more reactive derivatives to less reactive derivatives. Uh, but there is a pathway for getting from less reactive to more reactive. There are a couple of specific reactions that are possible. Uh, one of them is the conversion of carboxylic acids into acid chlorides. That enables some things. Uh, the other one is the 
you know, the protonation of the carboxylate anion, it gives you a way to get to the carboxylic acid from something less reactive because you can protonate the carboxylate anion. So, uh, and, and it's also possible under acidic conditions to make things better electrophiles. And so you can also, under acidic conditions, convert some of these functional groups back to carboxylic acid as well. But there are ways to get from less reactive to more reactive through the carboxylic acid and through the, uh, the carboxylate anion. In the next several videos, I'm going to talk about the different interconversion reactions between the functional groups on this screen. And uh, hopefully I'll try to keep each of those videos a little shorter than this one and the last one. Thank you for watching.